heroic deeds, and, and I don't want to embarrass you, but we are obviously following it so carefully, been fairly close to it also, was that was it true the stories we were getting that you were next in line to catch the, the flight home from Bali, uh, but you refused the position saying this person's in better, you know, greater need than me and the likes? Can you, you tell us some of those heroic sacrifices that you actually did stand aside for? Yeah, look, Dermot, I was at, like many, was in the, the Sanglar Hospital, which was the local hospital in Denpasar. And, look, for whatever reason, I was in a, in a small room there, which had been an office, obviously, and there was four or five people in there. So just for whatever reason, I wasn't out in the open, like I've seen uh, images of so many others. I, I was very fortunate. I had a, a young couple from Sydney who were living in Singapore at the time that, that spent a lot of time with me for whatever reason that day. And, obviously, uh, you know, I knew I was in a bad way, but I had comfort and I had support. Um, I'm not sure who the other people were in my room, but they had no one and they sounded like uh, they were in excruciating pain. So when it did come that time, there was a bit of discussion around uh, being flown out early on one of the earlier planes. But I felt because I had support and comfort there that um, I could probably just wait a little bit longer. Uh, now I understand a lot more about Burns, Dermot. I uh, it wasn't probably a wise choice and I should have jumped on the first one and got home. But that was the situation. I thought there was people worse off in that room I was in in particular. So I, I just waited. And I, like I said, I had tremendous support from a, a young couple with me. And can, can you explain to us then an understanding about Burns for Joe Public, the, the reinfection of what the burnt flesh does? Well, that's the, the, the biggest issue, obviously, is the infection. And that hospital we were all in uh, predominantly. They, they did an amazing job. But, you know, you're going back, uh, what are we now, 18 years ago, and it's a local hospital for predominantly the, the local Balinese. So, like I said, they did some amazing things there for us all, but they weren't prepared for the enormity of what took place. And for most of us, they didn't have enough dressing to dress the wounds. So the wounds lay open and exposed to, to infection, and that became the biggest issue for everyone involved. Jase, we were talking, myself and King, before the show today, we were talking about you when we were talking about the events and I said to him, you know what, I was in Bali in January, I went to the uh, Bali bombing um, memorial and King, he said, well, actually I was over there recently and I went along to it as well and I immediately thought of you um, and yep. Mick Martin and I thought, God, have a look at this place. Would have been would have been amazing. Is it something that... that you continue to think about does it pop into your head you actually wake up sometimes thinking oh, i've just been thinking about this how how has it played out in your life mentally no it's a great question robbo and I, for whatever reason i don't know why it's not something i find myself drifting back to that often and i've got no doubt it's um through the football and you know the experience of coming back and playing you're regularly talking to your teammates about it uh, then beyond that, uh, um, since the playing days, you, you're regularly speaking about it, whether it be schools or corporately. And and then obviously um, ended up writing, once I come back and, and played that game, just Slattery talked me into to, uh, writing a book about it. So it feels like the ability to, and it's at the right time and everyone does things differently, but for me, just talking about it so much, uh, it gave me a little bit of control back over the situation, yeah. something that doesn't control me. And I... Uh, and I did, I did uh, spend a lot of time uh, with a mate who was a counsellor too and, and that paid enormous dividends. So, yeah, it's a funny one because um, one day maybe there may be something but uh, at this point in time it, it hasn't been something that you find yourself drifting back to or, you know, waking up in the middle of the night thinking about it. How far out did you know you were only going to come back and play one game at AFL level? And, and I guess on reflection, how important was it in your overall story to, to have actually achieved that? Yeah, Hutto, I, I, my ambition all the way was to get back and continue on playing. It was probably about four weeks before ultimately I got selected to play. I just came to the realisation I, I couldn't keep doing it. And it was all off the back of a, a very minor calf injury that I sustained in a VFL game. Our, our affiliate at the uh, Kangas at the time in the VFL was Port Melbourne, um, Kingy's old club. So just playing down there, um, injured a calf, which was part to do with some shrapnel wounds I had in my lower legs. And... I just thought it was a, at that time, I was nearly about to throw it all away that Sunday night when I came home and I had some great support from my wife, uh, Narissa and um, you know, Glenn Archer, I think, and Anthony Stevens rang me straight away and, and my mate from Perth and Peter Hughes, who was in Bali with me, and talked me out of it and hang in there. Um, but in the next week or so, while I, whilst I didn't play, I was doing a lot of training and I just it was just that light bulb moment, how fresh... 
um, I really felt and how much I understood that probably with these burn injuries, it was going to be a, at least another couple of years of healing. So that four weeks out um, from that game, I, I knew in my mind that whenever it was I played, it would only be the one game, unfortunately. Jason, I don't want to get too personal here, but it may drift down and I want to proceed by saying well done for, for being you know, named head of football at GWS. It's a really important job. It's a big role. I think I watched you play football and I know knew a little bit about you, young tearaway in life, thinking, you know, like everyone is running through life, thinking, what's next, what are we doing, rah, rah, rah. Yep. How much did it mature you, the, the events, and, and how much did that event... You know, help put you in a position that you are today as general manager of an AFL football club. Yeah, Robert certainly did. I think it was part event and, and part the age that I was at in my life. And um, I was 28, nearly 29 when it all happened. So you get to that stage and you described it well. I, I was a, uh, it's fair to say, a rat bag, a tearaway and um, a risk taker. So, and that's how you live life and how you, how you played. So, when something like that happens and at that age in your life where uh, Narissa and I were about to get married and, and settle down, obviously, once I said before, when everything's uh, almost taken from you and not only football but your life, um, it puts everything into perspective and it, it does make you really want to knuckle down and make the most of your second opportunity. And, and football has been my life and I, I was very fortunate after retiring, doing a number of different roles, but one of them was in at the AFL and it just gave me a wonderful grounding and consolidated in my mind the direction I really wanted to go, and and that's um, I'm very privileged to find myself in the position I am today as a, a general manager of football. This is Dean Ladley's first year of coaching, so in 03, so round six was the Kerry return match we just talked to Arch yep. about, and round 11 yep. was was this match. So an unbelievable start to Dean's to Dean's coaching. I think when you when you sort of see the story and you're involved in the story, you sometimes lose sight of how big it, it actually yep. is. Yep. Uh, Jason, can you t take us to the point of the, just the pre-match, you know, that, that couple of days leading up to that round 11 game, how yep. much contact you'd had with people that you were you were the, the head of the cause, if you like, that you can get on with your life, you can get back to, to where you'd once been. I mean, I was blown away with the amount of those that were individually or personally affected uh, by the Bali bombings and the family of those um, that were either not with us or had suffered some some really tragic times. Can you can you tell us about that couple of days prior? Yeah, Dave, look, it was, it was a big couple of days and we were really conscious. I was worked really closely with the, the footy club at North Melbourne to, to make sure that we're able to pay our respects to, uh, and honour so many people in a way. So uh, there was a lot of organisation behind the scenes there and the club were great. That uh, not that I got to see it being in the rooms before the game, but there was there was a ceremony held on the ground that represented um, just if we talk in sporting terms, um, AFL clubs at, at all different levels that, um, across the country were, were out on the ground that they were impacted by what happened in Bali, and, and also I think there might have been some uh, representations from other codes. So yeah, there, look, there's a, a lot of people there. There's no doubt about it, um, and it just once again shows the impact that, that sport can have when, when uh, a situation is pretty dire, the, the power of sport. So a lot went on behind the scenes and, um, you know, I'm really grateful for the support the, the club gave me all the way through, but allowing both the footy club and the AFL to, to put something uh, to represent so many people have been hurting so much on that night. Talk about, can you tell us about the moment, the footballing moment, the, the human emotion moment? Duncan Kellaway's just all over your back. You've arched your back, you've taken a chest mark and you slowly fall to the ground with the weight of Duncan on you. Yeah. And you'd built up to trying to play a game of league footy again and in that moment you just want one kick, I would imagine. Yeah. You want one touch. Be in the moment when you mark the ball and between then and falling to the ground, did you, did you, you did it think to yourself, did you think to yourself, I've done it, I'm back. This is the moment my life has been for. It was, uh, yeah, you, you built it up really well, Dom. The only thing you missed was David King actually kicked it to me, like <laughs> alongside you. So uh, I was having a shot <laughs> <laughs> from, from from eighty. As you, you, you yeah. um, look, at, yeah, Dom. But yeah, look, it, it all happened so quickly. You get your body in front. Like I'd played a little bit before, but predominantly my AFL career as a defender, and I've been cruising around at centre half back for Port Melbourne, picking and choosing when I wanted to get involved and playing well at that level. But this was a massive step up. And, uh, yeah, to, to body in front, uh, read the flight, drop a ball, and just, oh, 
relief. I've marked it. But then the uh, the fear of the set shot, because I wore the gloves because my hands were a mess and I had the garments on both arms, That's both right. legs and the hands. And the garments were really slippery. Now, I remember in the warm-up, I tried a new pair of gloves on and uh, they're, they're fantastic for marking, but uh, they were just too too much grip on them to, to kick. And I knew I'd probably play forward. So I went with the old warning gloves, but you were just, all, all I was fearful of was that I could get um, the ball drop right and it wouldn't stick too much. But I knew as soon as I hit hit the boot, I, I connected well. And, uh, yeah, I was pretty relieved that, that that went through, that's for sure. I don't know if you saw Robbo last week, but he uh, he had those gloves on last week, didn't you, Robbo? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had kind of. You're right, he did slip over. It was it was a magnificent moment, Jason. And I don't know if the word's proud, but I, I think everyone in football was... Was so happy. Now, Mark, for you, you. I was proud to be Australian yeah, watching that, and yeah. we were commentating, Bomber. Uh, uh, yeah, Jason. that's right. Yeah, we, yeah, there was Gary Lyon, myself, Dennis, and Eddie. It made me proud yeah, to be yeah, Australian. Okay, I agree. Yeah. I was just happy, happy, proud. It was. It was just a, a beautiful moment. 